Hi everybody, my name is Cindy James. Welcome to my encaustic art studio. Today I'm going to show you how to paint a series of three miniature birch tree paintings. It was a very long video, so I did break it into three parts. The first is the background, the second is the birch tree portion, and the third is an oil rub and just finishing the paintings. So I hope it's helpful to you. I hope you enjoy it. And please reach out if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer if I can. Thanks very much. Okay, so I'm gonna wreck these three paintings. Why? Because I kind of like them, but not enough. I, I really want more. I want more out of these. So I'm gonna just do something crazy. What I'm trying to get to is something like this. And these ones weren't quite, weren't, they're not quite there. I really like this background and I like the, the gold, um, the gold oil rub on the surface. And these ones are different. And although they're similar, uh, they're just too dark. I guess I did get a nice contrast with the trees, but I don't know. I'm just not happy. So I'm going to, I'm going to wreck them in hopes of getting something I like better. So I think what I'm going to do is find my glasses and I'm going to just go over the top with some really wild colors. Maybe I'll use colors that I don't normally use. I think that would be a start. I'm very much a blue person, so I, I gravitate to blues and greens. Um, but I think for today, I should use colors I wouldn't normally. So I'm going to try this steel de green. And... I don't know, let's go. I love green gold. I think I'll treat myself to some green gold. And this color, which I'm not entirely sure what color it is, but it's very pink. Okay, and I'm, so these, these paintings have um, quite a bit of a textured birch tree on them. And then I did an, an oil rub over the top to fill the lines. So I'm going to show you how to do that, but I'm going to, I really want um, a swirly, almost an acrylic pour type of look in the background. So I'm going to put these wild colors over top and fuse the heck out of it just to see what I can get. Just looking for a brush that I want to use. I might as well use this one. And the other thing is I need my clear medium. So I'm going to move my palette around. I think I'm going to take this one off because it's kind of a gray blue. I'm trying to stay away from that just because I use it all the time. And today is an experimental day. There we go. Okay, that's better. Let's see what we can wreck. Okay, so I'm just gonna warm these up. And I I liked these paintings last night when I finished them. I did a video. Um, I still kind of like them, but I don't like them enough. I want to like them more. So that's why I'm going to sacrifice them, I guess, with these really bizarre colors. And yeah, I don't know what to expect. So I'm just basically going to go right over top and then I'm going to fuse it.
what is art if you can't play? Right? I may fail. This may be a big fail, but maybe not. Maybe I'll learn something. Part of the reason why I'm doing this is I can't quite remember how I got this background. I mean, I know generally how I got this background, but exactly what I did. I painted over something else, but I can't remember if I just put a, you know, a solid cover, color over top or if I painted more like I'm painting now. So that's sort of why I'm making a video is to help me remember too. It's amazing how much you forget when you're, well, especially when you're, I'm painting, I'm not really paying attention. I'm oftentimes I'm really just playing. So this will be a little bit more intentional, I guess. All right. Do I want to use the same color on all of them? I think so. I think I'll just make some areas stronger. This one has kind of a fade to it, so I think I'll try to do that on all of them. So yeah, once again, I'm using this steel de grain or steel de grain green gold. And this color is an Encausticos color from the warm set. I'm just gonna look for the package. It doesn't actually list the colors on here, um, but they are available online. And I will post that with the video in the link below. It's a very pretty, coral type of color. It's similar to this coral pink from RNF, but it's a little different. I love painting birch trees, but I also want to paint birch trees in new ways. So I'm very open to experimenting. I don't use a lot of red and pink in my painting so I love red when it's paired with uh, like a nice turquoise or pale blue I think that looks really pretty so I don't know these are just random paints that I grabbed out of my bucket over here so maybe they'll look good maybe they won't I'll start with this one. I feel like I might need to put some something light on here to give it a pop, but the white from underneath might be enough. And I'm really just going to try to move it around so that they don't look like trees anymore. Okay, well that's interesting. Not pretty, but what if I drip something in here? Could maybe drip a little bit more. 
Yeah, it's really disappearing. It's getting very much absorbed into these dark colors. So I'm going to try to give it some... Okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, amazing how that just gets really absorbed back into that color, eh? Oh, can't say I expected that. Okay, that's very liquid. I'm going to let it cool off a bit. Um, Okay, so I'm going to expect the same will happen here. I mean, that looks really neat, but there's not a lot of contrast there. So I think what I'm going to do, I need something brighter. I'm going to try this. Um, well, there's this cadmium green pale. Well, let's try this. I might have to go with something more opaque. I'm going to put some of this on. Oh, yeah, that's very bright. Can you see? Yes, you can. some of this on here and maybe I'll go with a full strength of this pink okay I think I can move this one carefully and then let's try to fuse this see what happens Yeah, I mean the torch, even though it doesn't blow air like a heat gun, you still can sort of direct the the pressure, I guess, from the flame to control where your paint will move somewhat anyways. Okay, well that's a little more contrast super ugly, but sometimes ugly makes a good background. All right, that's really flowing, so I'm going to leave that one. And although there's some interesting things going on there that hopefully I can work with. So I think I'm going to do the same over here. Actually, you know what? Maybe <clears throat> I'll try. This was in that same warm set. It's, it's almost like a nickel yellow. I'm going to try some of that on this painting here. And... Well, as you can see, I'm definitely not taking these too seriously. I kind of like this swipe. Curious what will happen there. There's a bit of a lump there. Okay. Can I move this one? Yes, I can. It's Halloween today, so these feel very... Halloweenish. Well, 
Okay, let's try this one first. It's almost like candy corn colors. Okay, well that's kind of cool. one definitely has more of the color stick around so and I kind of like what happened on that one so I'm gonna leave this one to cool and I might add a bit on this guy some of these sort of stripes and these are still very warm Yeah, I do like this one, but I think I'm going to lighten it up a bit just so it's, you know, not quite such a strong background. I don't know, we'll see. This one wants to kind of run this way. You know what, I'm gonna just put like a little blob of paint underneath because it doesn't seem level there. There might be something stuck on the other side and I want it to run towards the far side so it doesn't have a bare spot. Okay, there we go. I'm liking that. And I'll try this one. Okay, I like that too. That is actually, this one's really pretty. Okay. I really like that. I like that. This one is very strong, but I'm not, hmm, I'm not quite sure yet what to do with that one. I feel like some gold might actually look good in here. And I really like the green gold. I think I'll put a little bit of green in there. And maybe I'll just... run it I'm going to be brave today. Okay. Hope I didn't wreck that one, but we'll see.
I'm actually pretty cool with those. They're still really dark. So I think what I'm going to do just to lighten them a little bit, even though the dark gives a nice contrast for the birch trees, I think I'm still gonna try to lighten them a bit. So I'm just gonna use my clear medium instead of the white. And um, see what happens. Probably should have let those cool off a bit more. Just gonna wipe off my brush. Okay, I'm gonna let these cool off and um, see what it looks like when the top coat of encaustic medium is cool. And I'll, I'll give it about 15 minutes and come back. Now these look a little dull. <laughs> uh, once again, still working on it. I'm going to, I'm just gonna like try something. Gonna put a, a little bit of color down. And I'm gonna try some white. I'm not gonna put it on too thick. And let's try it over here. Okay. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> to like these. I like that one. So I think I'm going to try this similar similar effect on these two. Usually I'll let um, this build up on the edges to a certain point, but sometimes it just gets too thick and I sort of lose my perspective of where the edge of the painting is and I kind of want to know where it is so I don't end up with something I really like there that I have to scrape off later. So, okay. I think 
going to put another layer of white on this one. This one I think I'm going to stay, I think it's good. So I'm going to put some lines in here. That one's going to, I think, need a little bit more white. here but and then just taking out any any chunks that remain this one I'm still gonna I think put some more white on interesting didn't expect to do that let's see what happens okay so the plan was to show you some birch trees so let's let's do that